How long is it going to be, folks? How long? I'm hoping, hoping it stops. Interrupting the current neo-coronial cricketism to bring you behind the woodshed. This cricketude busting episode is BTWRLM409. And welcome back, behind the woodshed. Donation month, folks. We hit this pretty quick. We only, we'll only do this about four times a month. In one month, all year. Again, thank you. I can't tell you how much I appreciate last year, everyone jumping in and donating. And the Sound Minds group, thank you very much. We don't see much of that yet because the Sound Minds account on YouTube has been taken down for a few months as, as well as the others. Normalization of ignorance is out. And so I don't have much of a connection to all that as I did. I don't understand where the new ones are. But this is what happens. And the part of the reason why it's important to have a, a network that we can go to is that we can be non-dependent of this other system that was planned to be around us. We complain about it, but we didn't prepare it quite right. And uh, yet, there's still these little things that have been going on for a long time, like reallibertymedia.com, that will continue to put the word out, and all the other places that keep coming up and popping up to, to put, our, put our content, to hopefully get the word out. Now, the focus for me was to empower you, because I guess this is what my whole thing was since decades now, noticing how people would go out and get themselves in trouble with the system, think they knew what they were up against because they saw it written in some court case somewhere or some law they thought gave them rights and walked into the buzzsaw, if you will. And we have uh, the carnage of the past is still with us, essentially. And I looked at that, happened to come in maybe at the right time. I had the rose-colored glasses slapped from my face in my own, my own uh, incident. And uh, I said, this is not America. Where did it go? And I've been on that quest to find out where did America go? Well, in, in a way, it didn't go anywhere. We seemed, as a people, we seemed to have left the Republic and allowed ourselves to be brought into this other consequence, which is not good. And it's got many layers or things that could be components of each other. It may be independent, non independent of each other. It may be interdependent. And so it, it's a little bit more study. I've, that's what I've, I try to bring as I'm trying to show you the, the view of what's really you're walking into. But it, more importantly, knowing the disaster we're all, you're seeing now, how this thing is unfolding, that we can address it, and we necessarily have to, if we choose to have a future, we are in any kind of a private control. And again, I mean, I get, every time I say this thing, the mind about the idea about people, the non-aggression principle, like that's going to solve it. I keep telling you, when you have an aggressor that doesn't agree with that, you will have to defend yourself. And it may be the defense is not a problem, but you're going to have to anticipate having to, and it's better to kind of do it out there than when you're trying to do hand-to-hand. -hand. And so because you tend to, in hand-to-hand, -hand, it is for real, and it likely will get fatal, and ne not necessarily is that guaranteed that because we realize rights somewhere printed that that's going to protect us in reality. And so th these laws are the objective basis I figured out you have to really follow them to the T in a way. And a lot of times I've noticed I've now balanced myself from what I can see as violations to what governments did actually to set up the way you would do it. In other words, because of the way the system, at least in uh, this republic with the tripartite system, the judges were supposed to be following the law. And that that's, ends up being how we can catch them when they don't. And if you follow the law, that removes all those excuses and you're not making opinions on what you think is supposed to go on. You can write it down and see it. And anyway, so I thought coming in, our problem was that people, we were all ignorant and we were needing to find the better resolve. And I saw lots of people making stuff up and that didn't ever sit with me. It's a different type of fraud, even to yourself. And then years later, later I was wanted, told to, you know, I needed to bring what I know to people so that you hear, you can hear it, because what I was doing in, in real life with people, with so many people at the time, was overwhelming as well, was to bring them from the trouble into a resolution before they got in trouble, and not by getting in trouble to make a, de a deal. And we're going to hear a little bit about, about this when I get to this the tabs here real quick. So this, we need to have a place to show up. My problem was, I thought when people started to hear the better resolution to how to gain what was being stolen, from them, that they would really be receptive. And I, I may have overestimated that 
receptivity by a long shot. And so it's uh, been a little bit of a disappointment at one level. On the other hand, it's I still have to continue because we're that we really I don't know if anybody can't see how this is being how this is all be, literally transforming. They're telling us it's transforming right before your eyes. I don't know what to say, and I don't know what people see that they see this is going on. They call it insanity. They call it whatever. They call it wrong. They call it unconstitution. They call it whatever they want to call it. The thing is, it's still moving down the rail. And it's headed for a, the whole thing is headed for a blown out bridge that was all set up before we got here. And so I'm trying to figure out how to explain to y'all, this is that rail, this is going to that bridge, and how we're going to build us back a spur to get back to where we were supposed to be, not where these people have driven us through and to. So, again, it's imperative to have a, a network to do that. You see how they're destroying and fractionalizing us, and this first tab I want to talk to speaks to that. And I apologize for not getting to it. it this notice went to my other my other uh, Yahoo account, which I don't use too much. Somehow I had an, uh, an inkling I better go look at it. And uh, two comments were at the uh, Real Liberty Media so dot com site, so I can go and I can see directly what you're listening to at there. And I appreciate those comments because they get to give me feedback. In this case, it was. Uh, from Zoe, thank you for finding me again. Appreciate it. Just letting me know that that she's found me again, which is what I was speaking to before. When we break up these networks, we break up the the listenership. It really is a detrimental. My view has always been, and this may be not what Zoe was contacting me over. I know, but this is how I a little bit looked at it. That so people just don't find you get lost from your listenership, and they get lost from the information. And this is what happens when networks blow up. And this is what happens when they're caused to blow up. And this is a different type of a of a censorship, if you will. And it's uh, an interference. So it's important, if you will, as you can, whatever you can, if you will donate this month. We hope we try to get it all done this month. And for the most part, that happens. And I appreciate all that from you all to do that for Grimner. Give him the peace of mind that all the hardware, what it takes to get the word out, what it takes to keep the website up and all that stuff gets covered, and then he can just short focus on the extras. So, I appreciate your donations to, to, to date. I appreciate the ongoing donations. Uh, we have a few that are going monthly, and I, I can't imagine, you know, that's a dedication. Every time I hear this, I feel, although I've been here every year now for many, many years, but we're, I think we're going to be going on eight now, we here at reallibertymedia.com. is always a question. You're putting faith in me to be here tomorrow kind of thing. And that's not a pressure, but it's really just an, this humility that builds in me to say, i got to be here next week because you, you have the faith to do that ahead of time. I mean, there's no guarantees, obviously, but th this is a, a commitment. So I appreciate that you commit, in, if you will, in the faith of that I will be here, that Grimner will do his music, that, and we have a new show coming back, or co coming back to the network, and people coming back to the host coming back with a new broadcast right after this one being able to come into a place and do their their content. And it'll be, I think it's called, if I got this all correct, Top 10 Countdown with Gary L. and Gigi's Boo at 5 Eastern, right after this broadcast, if I have my clock right. And they're going to, I'm told, to be for something that's going to be completely disconnected. So that we have both spectrums on this network. If it's all connected uh, during the week with uh, Circolo and Grimner, and then we have uh, what's now all disconnected on Sunday. So you, in two days, you get the whole spectrum. Stay tuned right after the broadcast. We'll see. Hopefully, everything will be nice technically, and we'll they'll get uh, Gigi's Boo and Gary L back up on the network, and uh, it's good to have them back for as long as they can, and I appreciate the input from lots of people. Uh, and so, again, it's a place. It's a place for people to speak. If you want If you have a content you want to put on before the world, if you will, uh, before it is the world, actually, Gary, uh, um, Grimner will provide that space and so again it's just a neat a neat thing to be able to do and uh, a, a way to communicate so back to Zori thank you you're, you're showing why it's important to have a network and how why it's important to be in a stable place uh, although I see lots of people being a lot more I don't know what it is um, successful I suppose being those influencers out there on bigger networks I'm not so sure whether that's good or bad or, or what. And, and and to have people want to find me, my, what I, not me necessarily, but the content, I thank you for for the interest there, and I thank you for the 
continuing striving to find the things. Find us, find me, find whomever, whomever is, is speaking in these ways. And I'm again, I, I prefer and lean toward people that are providing information that allows you to act for yourself. And as you see, it's coming right to you. This whole COVID, I thought was a good thing, but I don't think people took it up quite so so well. This is coming right into your face. This is in your, on you, about you. And why I switched way back in in March to try to offer what was your organic remedy in the face of all the stuff everyone talks about all the rights. I say, okay, here's one of your rights. It's called a habeas corpus. You learn how to do that. You start doing. You start engaging that. You start prepared to engage it if you don't have to. There was other remedies around that we've talked about, and but the the, the habeas I thought because of the condition was the best way. Now we had lots of questions on that, and it's as if no one hears the prior broadcasts, and and so I don't know what more to I don't know what more to do about that than to say listen to prior broadcasts, go to your state laws for the writ of habeas corpus. I've told you how to do that last week, real quick, and uh, and I'm going to lead into something that's a little bit soon here, but. And what? And a lot of people ask me for forms. Well, I, I, it's my experience. You know, I'll give you an example why they're no good. The forms that are provided may not be adequate. Now, they'll be adequate enough for the system, but maybe not adequate enough for what you need to do. As if they're the bare minimum, but not quite enough. There is writ of habeas corpus forms you can get from the court. But as I've seen a few, I wouldn't use them myself. I would use them to show you where in the code you need to go in order to actually use the better form. You make the form from the statute, the law, not someone's interpretation of what they expect. And here's what why that became important a long time ago to me. I noticed when I started comparing the code, the statutes, to the forms that were provided, that they were, they were problematic and there were errors. And they weren't actually specific. They're the general get you to the, get you to the remedy, but they, form, but they weren't actually, they wouldn't protect you in certain ways that I noticed you needed to be. This became absolutely imperative when I got into the mining law and looking at the forms, well, I had to start filing as a miner, as a grantee, then I started to notice my status, I started to notice when you look at the government forms that you find from the bookstore, those were underneath the status that I wasn't, and if I filed those forms, which are my testament to my status, I was conceding something that I wasn't, but I was setting up a record that allowed a different style of regulation upon me. In fact, I was putting regulation on me that wasn't on me or anybody else. So I started to see the forms that were provided were not adequate, and they were speaking from a particular perspective. As I told you before, reading through the Motor Vehicle Code two and a half times before I had to laugh at myself, I said, why am I looking for my right to use the highway when that's not what this book is all about? And the same thing here. Why would I read a government use a government form if it it got to be? It's not that all the government forms are no good, but I find that most of them are not adequate. Uh, in this case, the mining form for making your claim or your affidavit of work or something was completely in a different jurisdiction relative to agency regulation. It wasn't even in the one the granted side. Nobody, I don't think, has noticed that at the time before me until I came. To, uh, I saw it, and then we I started filing and filing for the the code or a claim, our claim, completely different. I, I abandoned all the forms because they weren't adequate. Same thing with the habeas. There's a there's a couple provisions. One of them is status, uh, and it's what they create you into. They create you into a creature of the state instead of your your preeminent position as a posterity. And this becomes a battle, and, and it's becoming a battle in all the cases that I'm uh, helping on, and we have to make special provisions, and they concede the point, but then they won't give it to you, which is totally within, it's understandable to me, we've already been through it, I've already dealt with it, and so it's not that it, they can't do it, you're looking at a jurisdiction that has no actual lawful authority, and they tell you that, but you think it's, well, you don't, normal people, I mean, normally, not normal people, but normally people don't recognize it, but that's what they're doing, when you do recognize it, they fight you, and they don't listen to you, and in fact, it's uh, we're now finding out in equity terms, it negatives your character. It's a, it's a. It, they're saying when they do this that you lied to the court about your preeminent status as a posterity. At any rate, so without getting too far afield, the forms they give you are within the jurisdiction. You, there's statutory rights, and then there's rights that you can get out of the Constitution that were supposed to be secured to you, as I keep telling you, not to secure you, 
but to secure to you your life and your happiness and your health. These forms of which are problematic, and you have to go to the statute and look what you're required to do other than what the agency or an agency or the state would say that you need to do. In this case of the mining forms, to show you, it took a long number of years before someone challenged a form or found out when they filled, I can't remember which direction it went, it may have been both. It's interesting how these cases come together to answer the problem. For the Bureau of Land Management form that you got from the bookstore, if you were a miner and you've been filling them out, were found in one state to be inadequate to meet the needs, the requirements of state law for mining claims. Just as I had identified, but had no one had seen, it start it put a color taint now on the title because of the inadequacy of a government a federal government provided form relative to the state law, and the law is you follow the state law for property. But we're gonna find out again in this case I'm gonna to get to the tabs. I've been telling you about don't go to the federal courts, notwithstanding a couple of so-called wins. Your state law stuff, your state property law, your obligations, your third-party interests are all in the state jurisdiction, not federal. And so you have to keep track. Everyone wants to, you know, they want to maybe roll their eyes. It's just too complicated. I understand all that. This is what the nonsense they've put on us, that we were, we were supposed to be a lot more educated people, not because we were educated, conformed, we were supposed to keep, that was our republic to keep. And it, it's still there. It's just a matter of getting, getting oust these, uh, these occupiers as I, as I find them. So the forms that you may get around are dangerous, if nothing else. I find them mostly inadequate. I've asked you, more importantly, to go to your codes because the code is the law that the legislature make that the, the judiciary is to follow. And there's always these anomalous cases that come out that, well, you followed it, but that's not what they meant. Well, this is a different type of problem. How about if we don't look at all the anomalies first, we get you practiced on what you're supposed to do in your organic law, is all I've been really asking you with the habeas suggestion, because it's coming in your face, because they want you right, they want to pit each one of us against each other, and they're doing it. And now we're getting more of those stories. Uh, so let me move from Zori, and thank you for seeking me out and finding me. I thank you. I don't know how you did it, but Appreciate that we're there, and I apologize for not getting back to you. This has been a month ago. Two weeks ago, we got another comment, and I want to do this, go into this a little bit more detail. And maybe this is this, the broadcast is going to go more into detail here about what we're looking at and people's experiences relative to this nonsense, this COVID cover for the transformation of your nation. And you, now you see the, the president, you know, is absolutely on board. I told you this was coming. I told you it was the stops were off. I understand, though, someone, uh, governor of Florida, is uh, trying to put, post the middle finger to the to the president, uh, Biden guy. And uh, I would ask anybody in Florida to contact him and do a suggestion to have the governor, if he wants to do this more properly, to actually point out the failure. He needs to go back to his own state laws and the communicable disease statutes. And he, he, he need to suggest to him to follow very carefully what those those statutes say for how his state deals with communicable disease and go find whether or not, like I've asked you all to do, send the letter. How did the agency that was responsible to declare an epidemic, how did they do that? Did they follow the law? Did they receive that first report of someone, not a story from China or from the, from the gov, federal government or the CDC or the WHO, not some sound in the forest about the owl or a rock group, Concert. No, the World Health Organization spouting off about something called the COVID pandemic. Did their local local power, health authorities follow the statute to determine that that's what they, they had through the process of the statutes? You're going to ask the governor in Florida to do the same thing I'm asking you to do and have him prove to himself that his state has never declared under law the epidemic that he claims that he is under in order to say, go away, Biden, under the threat of losing federal funds. Again, he's doing it wrong. He's going to go put the state in some jeopardy or the contention, and he doesn't have to. All he has to do is what I've been asking you. You can get a state in Florida, the state governor's willing now, it looks like, to ask of his own people. He's the, he's the head of this thing, and they're delegates of his 
of the statutory delegates of his under his authority to determine whether or not the law was followed, and when it's not, when he finds out that it's not, there was no actual non-fraudulent exigency declared in his state, he can stand on that authority to tell the federal government, you're committing fraud. We don't find what you have declared on us. And we're going to restore this whole thing until we can find and demonstrate an exigency that I can actually put an emergency by. A police power is warranted by a non-fraudulent exigency. Anybody in Florida right now, you have, I see the news, you have the power in, to go to the governor. I can't do it. No one wants to listen to me. They think I'm some nut or something. I'm a little bit too out of line. Everybody I go to that's any kind of an, uh, an authority, they don't want to hear it from me for some reason. If I go through somebody else, it seems to work fine. Something about me and talking, even though I have no, I don't have any, I'm, I'm asking them to, to rethink stuff. I'm trying to show them where these, these powers that they have are, and they don't, they just they don't want to listen to what I have to say. If I tell someone who has a different, apparently demeanor, uh, a different approach, more likely they will accept that. And so I'm at, I guess that's my problem. I cannot, even though I'm just talking black and white, I go here, can you read, you know, this is what we have to read. This is what the authorities are. And this is in everything, folks. I don't care if it's fire. I don't care if it's the authority of the county to protect the roads. I don't care if it's the authority of the county uh, to protect production or the limit of the federal government against the county, when, for the most part, people, the, the officials are, it's like I'm too much. It's it's too much for them because the, they are looking, listening to an attorney as well. Other people don't have this insight that I do, so they don't communicate it, apparently. And so this is one of the limitations I have. I don't know why it is. I've been I've I've worked real hard over the decades and years, years and decades to work through this, but... It always seems to work better if I tell someone who understands, who can synthesize this information and then restate it to somebody, that, that this thing goes through, that some of you that are listening in, in Florida or can talk to someone in Florida, you talk to your governor and say, don't, don't make war with the president. Just show in your state that you just show you have not identified the thing that allows the epidemic that provides for the police power and you can end this thing and you can show on an official basis and stand in the power, the failure of the ability to make the non-fraudulent exigency that you don't have a police power to wield here as the governor. And when you break that, then there's nothing you have to fight. You're within your state authority. You're within the exclusive power of the state. Stop the fraud that there's anything until you can actually show it is what I've been asking you all to get ready to do for yourself. And that's been, again, I've been talking to the, like this for a year, it's been very difficult for people to come to terms with this. And so, but the governor is in, in Florida is in position now. He's positioned, he's fed up, it sounds like he's wanting to take, to me it's the wrong action because he has all the power to just prove he can't do what everybody else is doing. This is the same thing as South Dakota. The, I think it's the South Dakota governor. She's making excuses against having to argue against people that are beating on her for making her decisions instead of just saying, well, we here, we haven't found the thing that everyone's talking about. It's just not here in this state. And end the whole thing. They don't, she has nothing to talk against. Because it's all from the authority of the state then. It's now the state working in its proper authority. The thing that, that people condemn generally is the state. Okay, so I don't know what to say about uh, how to move this forward more than what I, came to me to tell you for all these years, all my reading, all my experience. Uh, when I, we're work, I'm working, oh, and I have to apologize Everybody I talked to, I haven't got to in emails last week. It happened again this week. I literally lost two and a, at least two and a half days. I jumped into a project, and two and a half days passed before I realized that, well, I didn't realize it. I'm posting for Tuesday afternoon. I'm posting my Twitter Tuesday Twitter on Thursday night at midnight, thinking it's Tuesday noon. Just Okay, so that sounds kind of weird, but that's the space lag, the, the, the warp that went on this week, burying myself in this project where a government, a judiciary is going, has gone so rogue and the way they did it requires so much attention to detail that it's absorbed my mind and time in order to make a record. That's all we're really, I think we're going to get out of this is to make the record for you all that are interested to read through it. What is, how these people are taking you down. 
how there is how the why what law what principles are being violated not just that they're violated and the judiciary is no good how they're no good and I'm we're doing this as I'm doing this as I and this is agreed essentially my contribution is to allow the pe the people I help to make the best record in order to show everyone else that may want to read where the problem is how it's the problem why it's the problem not just oh it's a problem because I told you as I've talked about interposition and how you have to start bringing it forward you have to bring the record of why the mal the maladministration how it's there not just that it's there okay this is not this is our if we wish to choose to to keep our future and for us for our sons and daughters and their sons and daughters we have to do this I don't have another answer. I'm not a violent mind. I have not a. I don't resort to the Second Amendment idea. I'd have. Yes, I'm not that I'm immune. Like I'd like to go strangle people, but it's not. You know, that's just a thought. That's just that ain't going to happen. There's a molasses speed condition that goes on when you're dealing with reality, and that can be quickened when you put more heat to something. You heat up the molasses a bit, you, and you and you get it to flow better. That's the the focus of a, a million sons of the people saying, and I don't mean the sons of the people, I mean the the, the people as a, a, a million sons of energy focusing on what they identify is the malfeasance, not that there's just any malfeasance. And I've been bringing this to you for over a decade throughout the content, and this is partly, I told you before, as part of a plan. I don't give it so concise as lessons. If you did that, you can see you get censored. We're already starting to get censored. But some of this stuff I talk about can't be censored in the subject matter. So they're looking by the word, and they take you out by the word now. But if I strand, if I put string this through, it does two things. One is it somewhat protects what, what I'm doing to be here to be able to tell you. And secondly, you have to be listening because I'm bringing it all in context. And it's not handing you that form in words. I don't want to ever tell you this is what you are to do, but this is what you have to get done is what I want to say. You have to find for you how that's going to work. And a couple of you, I really appreciate in some of the communications, which I haven't got back to, you're finding out even when we have a disconnect in time or whatever the little problem is, something else pops up, it attracts your attention, and you start to work on that for you. And it's not just what I talk about, which I think is absolutely important. Absolutely important that we all figure out for each of us locally what we need to do to to buffer or and combat what's coming on it. So... Let me touch the combat part. And it's the combat inside, the civil war inside your courts. A comment, a long comment. Maybe I took, I've taken a little bit to get here to it. Again, there's no guarantees on any of this. I can just tell you, you take certain paths, you're, not, you're going to get a dead end. You take other paths, it might be a dead end. You take some paths, and the most of the ones that we know of that we complain about are a dead end, but that dead end is really... How are you going to take that obstruction with the occupier and open it up, make a record open to people that it becomes a non-question for everybody? This COVID is really doing that for people. It's I mean, let's just for this get aside quickly the school thing, the fact that pe kids went home. I told you would probably the little goats coming home and having to be homeschooled for as hard as that would be, except that COVID locked everybody home, which was kind of a neat, has brought. The, the sons and daughters from the school system, the indoctrination system. And I think mothers and fathers are saying that this is better. Well, well, I told you this would be a potential plus. So there's pluses that we can pull back our, we can get our strength back. And so this, this is not all negative. It's just everyone has to figure out where they fit within this without conceding a, an inch. We like a, the Jefferson Mining District. We don't concede a miner's inch. It has to do with water. You don't concede it. A miner's inch of water in the processing of your minerals, which I, sh I forgot to mention. For those of you that can, we've found a, a place to, to meet again next Friday. Go to the Jefferson Mining District website. Look for the directions. Click that. It jumps you over to the meetings page, and there's directions. It's in the same general location as the old, old meeting place. And we're going to start meeting up again here once a month as we normally did in a new place for a while until we find a, a more permanent spot. But we've been given a, an opportunity to have meetings, and so we're going to start up again, for those of you that can and are interested. Anyway, getting back to this and what we do, uh, I'm interested in this in this, in this this comment to the reallibertymedia.com. Uh, Kelia, 
is from uh, two weeks ago or so. And it's a telling me, us, as, as a comment is open to everybody, their experience. And I want to go through this. And this is to give us an idea of why some directions and some don't. And then I'm going to back a bit of what I'm saying here up with a, a court case that just happened where the judge, who I think is a criminal, she was involved in our court case in 2013. We outed her as the criminal. So that's just, I have a court, an, interfere, an, an example from this, this so-called judge. But she's correct in a couple things. And she's, she's not, they're not stupid, they're just criminal. And they hide it, and they're undercover. And, and there's a lot behind all this. But So I, I'm not going to tell you I agree with this judge because I agree with who she is and what she is. But she said what she had to say because the one coming into the federal court was incorrect. And the easy answer was just to tell the easy answer, and it's not political. It's really straight up. It is what I've told you and what you have to look forward to. Uh, Achilia, and I hope I pronounced that right, states this, and I'm going to break into this. I'll state a, f a sentence, and then we'll, I'll discuss it instead of trying to read the whole paragraph. It's quite extensive, but it goes through a whole lot of things and some questions. And it also goes through statements of people, even my allies, are saying, what good is all this? And I want you to consider that, that question. If you concede to the question, or accede to it as a question, what good is all this? And you don't, and you give up, you've lost. And that's the only answer I really will have with that. We, if you say at all, anytime, and don't move further than the thought, and then to say, okay, I've asked that, but it, that's, that's kind of ludicrous. What good is all this? So why do you why do you do any of this if it's not working? Well, I think it is working. It's just taking a time. But if you ask that question, what good is all this? And that causes you not to do more. I think it's over. What? There's no impetus. You will have come on you what the freight train where the freight train is going, which is going over the precipice. Anyway, getting that's kind of like the punchline. Let's move into this. Now listen, this is 2020. All right. Someone back in March, whoever Achilia is, and his wife, filed a lawsuit, pro se, they say, pro se, against the governor of Colorado and county health director and county commissioners basically for constitutional violations. So I want to put this in context. In March, and I don't know if they were listening before, and I don't understand the, the context relative to the broadcast and the content then. In March, I'm just coming on to tell you, do the habeas, Understand what that is because it's a simple thing. The burdens are flipped. You can get the proof, all that. That's what we were saying. I was coming into a more commitment to tell you, as this thing was going to roll on to us, what it meant, how we were going to respond. Instead, they filed a lawsuit in federal court against the local authority. Now, on its surface, that a lawsuit is well beyond what I was talking about then. And so I want to have you understand that, that I don't know whether I, there is... in a counsel, if I will, from the broadcast saying, don't do this. But here, we're going to see why. And it's not, this is not a judgment. This is because it comes later. To, we need to answer this because this, the following questions in here start to answer to what I was saying before. What, what do we do? Is this, what is, good is it? And, and this is laying out the, what you need to do. You need to lay out that battlefield. So that's why I want to take some time here. Uh, the pro se, that, that, I don't think you're going to get this out, but we don't come in as a pro se. I don't agree with that. And there's all kinds of statuses you can come in. I just try to come in as a status underneath a document, an organic document. And uh, for a couple of the re cases, you just come in under the man or woman aggrieved using the word of the co state constitution. And that's a clue there. I'm using the state constitution, not the federal constitution. And so the constitutional violations mentioned here, I don't know if they're state or federal. These are all important decisions that had to be made. So they come in in 2020, back in March, when I'm coming in and telling you, let's try the easy road and first get your letter. I don't know if any of that happened. The federal court, he writes, or she, well, he writes, my wife, I, I assume a male. <laughs> uh, the federal court dismissed the case because the governor amended his lockdown order, so the judge deemed the case moot. And so whatever the court deemed was the action part was made irrelevant by the governor's order. Now, let me explain that. That's interesting. It'd be interesting to go back for Achilia. Go find out if that order was amended after that lawsuit was filed. 
If it was about the same time, there's a, a question. If it was done with like a week or two after, or within, I would say equity time, it's within three to five days, and they change that, don't underestimate what you just did. And these are the kinds of things I started to learn to say. You'll never really know, but you can kind of get an idea. Our wins right now won't be obvious. Our wins are going to be when they, when you cause shifts, and they may be very subtle. And so I'm not going to say it's a win or loss. I'm going to say there's a demarcation in what you've said that I would go back and look at that and say, okay, well, we didn't get our lawsuit, but they did change that order. But our problem is he was still allowed the authority to change the order. And this is what I've been speaking to. So the point was not made prior to take away the ability, prior to invoking and allowing the court, allowing him to invoke that prerogative power, which the federal court has to give to them. And so I don't understand the dynamic in how you, the case was presented. In a way, I, I don't really want to revisit that either and read it through it. I would just take today, if you were considered, which we're going to get to, take today and reconstruct your events today, and you notice they're changing. It's getting it's less and less ability to get into certain areas now because they're lifting some of this stuff. But anyway, you are still going to be impressed. They're going to third-party mask interference. I'm going to touch that, I hope, going through all this. And, and, and that's why I say your, your, your battle, and I don't, you don't want to make it a battle with people, but you don't want to argue with really insane people. You don't want to argue with people who are misguided or, or not quite intelligent enough or even really intelligent and quite don't get it. Fear is an interesting animal to deal with. That you need to be calm and get your facts together. Make your record. I'm going to give you links on some people that are already suggesting this. And uh, though I don't fully underwrite a couple things on it because it concedes the mitigation of value when you're facing someone in the street on, in a store, a third-party argument, you're, you can't argue. You just have to get your facts laid out for the, for the case, and you hope that the way you do that impresses them with leaving you alone. You don't want to get yourself in trouble like a recent guy just did and then get your case dismissed without the concession of the governor. Getting back to this uh, idea, so the federal court dismissed the case because the governor amended and, and the case went moot. In other words, whatever the cause was, was uh, the court figured was fixed by that governor having power to do so. That's the uh, latent fr problem here. They st the governor still has power under a fraud, and that's the, that's the problem. So we've got to get at that if I can point out something here. The county case made it as far as a three-hour virtual trial on injunction. Now we see more, more that in the state law there was an injunction. This is equity. And I'm going to tell you, there's a whole lot of stuff around equity you need to be catching up on to do. It's not hard. It's just a matter of the study you have to do. Once you see this stuff, folks, it's all it's a natural thing that starts to pop out. It's not so technically confined to, to the court cases. It's just principles. You all have them in you. But to watch them and look at them in black and white is just reaffirming. In fact, it, it becomes that reaffirming authority that's black and white that you rely on. In fact, Again, in fact, in fact, in fact, all these facts of what we're doing, those are being restated in the case that I've been working on. We're not talking about, I try to avoid court cases. I strictly stick within equity principles when you're doing this, and you have to have them in your mind about how this works. When you assert fraud, not just that you're trying to counter that it's fraud, but you assert fraud the way the elements are for a complaint, that has to be dealt with, as we're finding out, forthwith immediately in the first answer and if they don't they lose when you identify that and the court goes contrary to that now you've got your appealable error and i'm saying it this way because it's not really so simple especially when you're again and you're doing a lawsuit you sue you sue for injunction you sue for mandamus it's not like a habeas those prior those other remedies those other writs are the burden is on you in the habeas the burden is on the government so understand, you have to understand all this stuff. Once you get it, it's not complicated. You just have to settle down, stop being ADHD to yourself and agreeing that you are, and just start write, literally write stuff down. Don't don't just think about it. Writing down has a, it's a lesson builder all by itself. I've learned so much by having to rewrite stuff for years. I wrote stuff, 
I didn't you didn't I didn't have any technology when I was in the law library. I had to write all the passages, all the principles. I had to hand write. I think that did something. I'm using things I don't even remember reading that are there to use. That is just one of those things that I, I, I don't even know what to speak to you on, that you will gain for yourself. Another reason why forms are no good, and you're gonna, and I'm a little bit, uh, in the, a couple tabs I'm going to give you this today on where to go to get information. They're offering forms. I don't agree with that. And they're offering them for some money. I don't agree with that. Because if it's not even just the money, then okay, someone has to, get, has to get paid for their work, but they're offering public documents that they compile is the wrong way for you to go. You have to go do the steps it takes to go through that code. You have to see it. You're going to see stuff that's not even relevant to you that your eyes see, that your brain kicks into. You see it, your mind picks it up, and you start over time building this library of function about what these statutes do that you aren't even focused on, but it's there, that you'll never get not searching it out to find what you need, that it doesn't orient you to your own place in the state. We all have to know what these codes are they're using against us. And if we don't, I don't know how anybody can say, even have a complaint. And if they read and they think that they're implying it, applying it right, and they're not, that's really kind of the worst thing. But let's get to the good stuff. Let's get to the, we're reading. We're getting to it. You take direction. Do not take someone else's work without you going through it yourself. And I just, I, I can't advocate that enough. You don't, okay, so read the code yourself. Search it out yourself. That's all important. That lays out a whole different thing for you, as, it, as my experience shows. Let's get back to their virtual trial on injunction. There's an equity action right there. It has a very short turn, and, there, and his statement here is, the county hired a civil rights law firm to defend against our civil rights and constitutional rights. How transparent. And so I'm, I don't know what, how much to de dig in here. Absolutely they would have an attorney come in. That you see that it's a civil rights, uh, and you think civil rights is something good, I, I would wonder, if you don't and you understand what I've talked to you about civil rights, you understood that's why a civil rights attorney showed up. Uh, they weren't talking about, you were not necessarily talking to your constitutional rights, even though you referenced them. And so this is a more detailed analysis on what you did and relative to something you could tie to them. And so I don't know how that injunction went. If you alleged, and factually so, alleged fraud, and they did not answer it, your first answer to them is, I object that they're even here. Equity does not allow one who is alleged to have fraud and not responded to not answer. Equity requires upon an equity court, equity principles require on an equity court that the respondent of a validly alleged fraud, which you're listening for, which I've been listening for in every case, they don't, they don't do this. I've been really surprised, actually. It would be a good throwaway thing for them to do, but they don't. Yeah, because there's another principle working. But when you allege fraud and they don't come back with an avoidance of that, that's your first answer. You, you can't let the hearing go. They don't have equity. They have, the respondent has no equity. I'm telling you these words, you can't repeat them until you go find an equity book and you go read it for yourself because you have to see the context. And they're just short paragraphs of context. So it's not like I'm actually saying a bunch. And yes, the books are quite big that you go research. 1,200 pages, 1,300 pages. But I'm talking about one paragraph in that book. And it's relative to one subject matter called fraud. And so you have an equity case. And so I don't know how this went. It said three hours. I would hope that you got on the you had alleged pr fraud properly, specifically they state in the statute, and then I would wonder why this thing went past. It went for three hours on that. That's pretty interesting. Now it could have gone three hours, and good for you for going for three hours. Perfect. I mean, how many people go for three hours toe to toe with these people? That's a cool thing. I don't underestimate what you did there, even though it, it sounded like you you didn't get out what you wanted. Again, that order that governor changed that order. You just didn't get to the real the real part which is to eliminate the fraud, uh, eliminate for fraud the ability to have the prerogative police power, as I've said over and over and over, is allowable to you better and clearer and more directly from a habeas, because that's really the focus. That's how you get there. So how transparent? Yeah, if you know, yeah, there, you're, there's a word, that transparent, you're, you're actually seeing the corruption. 
when they brought the civil rights attorney because you're subject to every exaction that they can put on you. And if you don't figure out those what those are and how to make a record that those were uh, wrong, even wrongly wrongly because they didn't have a right to impose that exaction, then you're missing that trick, and that's where it goes. That's how they they lead it. I'm gonna I'm gonna give you kudos for going for three hours here. That's that's a good that's a that you're not thrown in jail on that. That you were doing some some work. Now, don't underestimate what you were doing there. Don't underestimate what they were doing what they were doing to try and avoid what you were saying. As it turned out uh, here, as he goes on to say, the judge was afraid that the COVID scam and said that it was not for her to deny the authority of the health director who was only doing her job. There. That's the failure on the on the relator, in this case, or the plaintiff. The, that was what I was talking about. You didn't take away that the court could not give that director any power. And how I've thought it looks like it has to be done is they can't act without their delegated authority through the communicable disease statutes, in, in this case in Colorado. You need to go read those and need to find the, it's about five. Nevada's, I think, is the is the lo, most steps, which I thought was kind of interesting because it really delineates what's supposed to be happening. Uh, more along the lines of what the Portuguese court said and delineated how this is actually supposed to work, where they also said the doctor never loses jurisdiction over the patient. That's uh, important. It's exclusive jurisdiction. And so it shows you there's a distinction between the health authority and the actual uh, the actual illnesses and the diseases and what they're supposed to do. Getting back to this, there's the answer. You did not in, in any way, at least that they felt, that they could, de- they felt they could defend against whatever you presented. That did not show on the record that the the health director did not have that authority. And so here we are. It's a. I'm just going through like the, you know, the, the debriefing, if you will, the the, the post game show analysis of what I can see through what you've said. Uh, anybody would say here in this case, and what my anticipation would be on that. Now, whether you did actually or not, that's a different detail. And this would be more speaking to that corruption. And that's why I load the, I preload the petitions with the acknowledgement that there's going to be a corruption. And I'll tell you what, that's, that's really, whether or not the occupier will ever take that as well, uh, well taken is irrelevant. When you can call out the corruption before it got there and then you can point in your petition, there it is. And it was to further the fraud that they're not looking at. That makes a whole different record that they're admitting to on your anticipation than just saying they're corrupt. Now, everyone on that record, any looking at that record, gets to, if they want to put their mind to it, can look and see how the fraud got done. Now, you're still sitting without maybe a remedy, but they know you're there. They took three hours to deal with you. They gave it to the, d- the director, and then apparently there was no comeback to say, wait a minute now, you had no authority to give someone without equity and without actual prerogative power, because they didn't follow the statute, the ability to have a say. And I'm I'm kind of see I'm going into the case a little bit more than I ought to be here. I just want to point if that's where what happened, if that's how it went, that's why it went this way. And this is the local case now. So there was apparently two two cases. One was the federal got kicked out because the governor had changed it, and the cause only apparently was subject. The the, the order was changed. I would go look very carefully. I think you did something there. I don't know. Uh, the second one went for three hours in an injunction hearing, and they found that there were, you had not taken away, or no one, and no one in this case, in, in this instance, you had not taken away by demonstration of a failure to follow the statute of the communicable disease delegation. You had sh- failed to show they failed to compl- comport their conduct to that, which should eliminate any say at all. So there was your answer there in the local case. The judge just, whether or not she was afraid of the scam, she re- punted, if even punting, to the what she found to be a valid authority al- still and already existing in the in the uh, public health authority, which a court cannot interfere with unless you show abuse of the discretion delegated. And that's a whole other thing. It's a secondary step. You can sue for the being out of the out of the police power, not having it. And, all, and under color of it, operating to harm people, irreparably harm people. Oh, and even if you show that you, you avoided that fraud, and it wasn't, and there was a detail that you missed, and they did have an authority, then you go for the secondary, and you know, on the alternative, if they can show that, 
your petition says in the alternative you're, you're, there's an abuse of the discretion that they've been delegated. So as I'm talking here, we're talking in steps and fallback positions. And also, there's a concession of reality to, in the way you do this. There may be a real thing out there that they may have authority for. It just doesn't look like it from the evidence. And then they cause irreparable harm. And so let me move on here. Our evidence and the blatant obstruction, obfuscation by the county did not matter. Okay, so here's the problem. We look at this, and this is what I, I mean, I've been to this. I've been through all this. Oh, I had the proof. I had the thing, and I had the that. You did not, I'll use the word that they'll use, relative to the vested authority the, that you did not remove and the court recognized in the public official. I'll just tell you, this is the prerogative of the police power. You don't have standing before that power. And so you could, it looks like an obfuscation because it looks like a scam, but you didn't take away the power that was that the court hand uh, agreed at that point rightfully or wrongfully I'm not, I don't I can't tell you what your record did but uh, that the court get granted to the government and this is the awesome prerogative power that the government gets if you don't take it away from them and uh, the, one of the only few ways I know to do that is to assert the fraud rightfully rightfully assert the fraud not that you make it up oh this is fraud you show how you have to show how you have to assert that specifically and it, it comes in spay. I mean, it comes, I don't care how you look at this thing, it's a fraud. So if you just delineate in short sentences those facts, you can show how that works. Whether or not an occupying bar member is going to recognize, that's a whole other thing, but at least your record's a lot better than, and then we don't feel like, oh, the blatant obfuscation, you know, yeah, that's what they're there for. But maybe, maybe that record, that record evidence was not applicable once the court found the power, that prerogative, that awesome prerogative power. I don't mean awesome in the good sense here. It's it's a formidable power to overcome. And if you if they get an inkling that if a court gets an inkling that they can have it, we're done. We're done as as in, as far as fighting that. And that's why I said don't go to federal court. Don't go to federal court for two reasons. These are not federal matters. Unless you have a diversity issue, you can't get into the federal court. These are not federal matters. And the relationship in the federal court between the federal government and the state is not with the people. And where the complaint goes in the state, and you saw this early on with the governors going into the federal court and just saying we have sovereign, we have a sovereign right, and no one said anything about the fraud that the federal courts just, just move the case in favor of the state, because you don't have standing relative to the organization of the organic state-federal relationship. And so I said, avoid those unless you set up a record of the rights, violations, fundamental rights relative to something the state was supposed to do or couldn't do, and you can show that. It's a second step to get into federal court. And I'm saying that notwithstanding the Pittsburgh case, which is great, and, and early on you didn't have that in, in March, none of us did, that there may have be a, one judge in the, in the world that will look at Jacobs in 1905 and actually ab impose the restriction that's in there against the state's parole. And it has to do with the abuse. And so if you understand the principle underneath that, you will tailor a complaint to that. I still wouldn't rely on federal, federal court. Literally, especially with these third-party attacks we're getting with people attacking you wherever you walk around the stores and this and that. You, they, they, those are strictly state law type of things. And there is where you build a record. You'll, I'll give you a link here. And this is where you also build how you're going to move in. You can write letters in order to anticipate to a, a store's attorney or the store owner how they're in violation of the law. And you do that through the, it's a private administrative process, private letters. You don't have to get so legalistic, but you lay out your case and lay out how they've uh, they violate you just in stopping you. You have to have all that together, though. This is where we've gone. This is, I've told you this is going to get much more complicated if we don't stop it early and we, and we didn't. So moving on here, the, uh, notwithstanding the, the COVID scam and all that, the court found that the health director still had the prerogative power. We're, you're essentially done here. Uh, the judge, uh, to the judge, the virus was justification to suspend the Constitution. That's that awesome prerogative power. It still has a constraint for abuse. And that would be also in your statute or your constitution, which you ought to have stated and then asserted in the alternative that they didn't actually, especially with an injunction, they didn't, they did not 
address the alternative of abuse of discretion once the court found it in the public health authority. And then you would turn to the fact that you're, those things, if you had the evidence that they didn't conform to the state statute, you then said they've also, because they didn't conform, they're now acting upon me, a healthy man or woman, or maybe husband and wife, healthy one where their authority does not extend, so everything is arbitrary and capricious. It's abuse of discretion. Now you move into the abuse of discretion standard. So there's the first one, they don't have the power at all. It's due to fraud. They haven't stated a non-fraudulent exigency cause for the police power. Then if, they, if the court's going to give it to them, you fall back as the alternative that what they are doing is an, an abuse of discretion. And the way it, is, it works is that they're not following, there was never a report against you that their quarantine or mitigation powers can can be applied lawfully. And then, and by them, by doing so, they then violated fundamental the rights that the government will recognize, not our made-up rights. And so I'm laying out how this case, I'm, and I know I'm quarterbacking here a bit, I'm just looking through the words and looking at the experience and this thing over the year and my experience before and saying, okay, this is how this starts to lay out. When I look at this, I understand the like the blatant obfuscation. Yeah, that, just understand that's what they're going to do and that's what they're there for even though they're going to put the shiny, smiley face of justice on. But you don't even speak to that. You just start to show, you just make sure your paperwork is going to cut through their ability to do those few points I've just pointed out so they can't give the prerogative power. Then when they did, you still had an argument, if it's an argument, about the abuse of that power. The, the abuse is within the court's determination. When they say that it's a fraud to say they could put power on you, the power that the courts now acknowledged on you, where there was no medical report or determination that you're the contagious principal, now we have a different problem now for the court. It's not about being scared of the scam. It's about an abuse of authority on you that's otherwise not subject uh, but for their failure to follow the statute, which they are required to do. And so they're under color of a, a communicable disease crisis. There's now you're starting your color, your violation of rights under color of law that may start the federal claim rights. And so I hope, hope I'm saying this. I'm taking a little bit of time here, a lot more than I thought, like I did. I was an overachiever last week on the on the tabs. I thought I was going to get to most of them. I'm not so sure. I got I just brought up last week's overrun of tabs. I don't know if I'm going to get to them today, but I think it's important as we walk into people now fighting amongst each other, do you understand how this thing is set up? So you have a better way to construct your record for you, each one of you, each one of you. Now, a lot of you will just avoid it, and I, I agree, just avoid it where you can, but it's coming a moment that that's not going to be possible, and we don't want to see you all getting in trouble, like for wrong, a trespass, when the trespass was just stopping you to go into a, a place open for a public accommodation, just stopping you is, got, is two crimes. And I'm going to show you some guy who understands that down in California with someone that I, I agree with one of the mitigation side, but not fully with her addressment of, uh, allowing the prerogative power to continue, not challenging that, just just keeping up with how people can't, or the government or people are not supposed to interfere with you in those wrongful mitigation measures. I don't agree with that. But in the moment, you need to have some protection. So I've told you, you do what you have to do, and I want to offer that. So let me move on here. We've got another sentence here or so, paragraph. Uh, the county, uh, okay, the... The blatant obfuscation the judge, uh, to the judge, the virus was justification to suspend the Constitution. That's right, because you didn't show that it was a fraud. And if you mentioned it, you didn't reassert it while there as an objection to, through an equity principle. And she was able to continue. Uh, we knew there was a, I'm just reading from here, folks. That we knew there was another way to get at this issue. And over the months, I've resolved that there was a fraud involved because of the info of Dr. David Martin and others. And so here's, I think, that doctor that I said, here a couple weeks ago, go listen to him. He's got a document, a dossier, I think. I think that was the dossier guy, uh, do, 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 Dr. Dossier there, talking to you about Fauci. That isn't even the problem, but it'll give you, a, and that's another thing. You see the fraud, but that's the Fauci fraud is not the fraud for you, local to your state. So don't be careful on how, how much you bring in the foreign interest and agree to that. 
In fact, you should kick it out. You should go look, find the rule that allowed it and say that rule was no good because it violated the legislature's constraint that your, the matter would focus in on sick people, that the power only focuses to quarantine those that are unwilling to be quarantined. That's a second step. So they don't even have a record that shows you were unwilling, let alone that they have a first medical report. And then they went through the process of at least four to five steps beyond that to determine you, each one of you, was the problem. And so that's the fraud. And that's the thing you're looking at. Not what, not what foreigner Fauci did. Okay, so that you gotta look very carefully. That just explains the extent of the fraud. Not the fraud you're gonna be doing under state law. And this is strictly to finding the duty in the code that the, re the public health official was supposed to follow and failed to do so, thereby causing irreparable harm to you. That if they had followed it, likely would not have been able to touch you and adversely affect your fundamental rights. So, okay, so you got some information for fraud. You're starting to see it. Uh, again, you could, you know, if you've been listening behind the woodshed, I've been exposing those, those people that are speaking that way. But be careful not to say that's how we prove it. What we you speak to in the state side is that the order, the emergency orders, are based in fraud. And they're not based in an objective determination. And that's where the PCR test starts to come in because they claim that the COVID under suggestion of China, COVID pandemic, under sugge foreign suggestion of the WHO, is the cause. And all that was supposed to do actually was the state governor was supposed to, in some states it's actually a hierarchical thing, where he has to go to a public health official. Sometimes he can go look, but he still has to go look. He still has to determine, not just make it up. And so this is where the fraud begins, because on the order, the orders are facially fraudulent, where they don't declare how they came to the epidemic. The outbreak, the epidemic, and then for the state. See, there's never a pandemic for the state. It would be a, an epidemic, and then limited to where the areas are. And that's all state law. And so would you have a, go a governor under state law, under color of a communicable disease crisis that he's fraudulently, or she has fraudulently imposed, now you have interference of your constitutional rights under color of state law, like you see your civil rights statutes, civil and criminal, speak to. What is that, 2018 USC 242 or something like that? And then the 42 statutes that are your civil rights, you get exactions of every kind. <laughs> you, you, you've got to delineate those a lot clearer, that they didn't have the right to do that. You weren't subject that way, and they imposed those under color of law to affect your your rights. So moving on here, we're moving through. Now we're getting to, okay, now we this is their experience. I, I thank you for stepping up. I, I don't think it was as bad as you actually feel in some regard, and I think rel not, uh, relative to the potential here that I see the so, I say failures, but don't take it to heart that they're a failure. I think they're oversights. I think the record could, if I'm, unless you did this, I, I'm seeing a potential failure and or not an assertion of objection when the judge did not look at, at the fraud and, and kind of uh, swept it under the carpet. That's different than saying she wouldn't look at the scam. Again, the, the, the specificity of the word here. But uh, So we have, a, we have wanted to pursue but this, but after seeing the court's reaction, it seemed a waste of time. Now we're getting into some of the reality that I'm reflect that comes to me even amongst my friends, my allies, that they they're coming to this point. This is like a waste of time. What good is it? So let's bring into the, the more important and serious point about this. Now now you seem to be saying it's not a waste of time and needs to be done. Yes? And this is where I was saying before, I was loading up this discussion before. You're looking at an overthrow of your way of life, your life, your property, your government, your establishment the cancer inside the government, it'll still look like the form on the, the false front that, it, that you've been promoted that it is. Inside, it's all eaten out. I've been talking about this forever, and people do. Uh, is it a waste of time? Is it a waste of time to preserve for you now, your property now, and for your future, your sons and daughters, or those that you like in the world of sons and daughters and their families, is it worth it to, is it a waste of time to preserve that way of life, I think is is a question, I, I want to say, you should say, yeah, but I don't know, it's up to everybody. Do you want that? Do you want the, the ability to have happiness and property and have a government that will su secure to it? Not the way we've been experiencing it, not the way you were treated 
but the way it's supposed to be done. Are we going to fight for that way of life to bring the future into that way of life? Are we going to subsume, let them subsume us underneath this mental hysteria and whatever, I don't even know what the heck you call it, an agenda of all kinds of names, uh, to take away that and make have you have no rights and no property but what you're told and you will like it. Is, is it a waste of time to do whatever we know to do, even if it's a bit in error and not to jeopardy, but I mean, we just have, maybe we need to adjust ourselves as I'm trying to show today. Is it a waste of time to fight for that type of a life versus capitulating, giving up, and letting what the railroad that's sent, planned to go over the precipice of the blown out bridge, is it a waste of time to protect against that, to build a spur quickly? Maybe even get to the point where you realize it's not even the railroad. That was what they made you believe you were on. They're going to go over the precipice on their own. We just got to find that we were never there in the first place. There is no spoon. Okay, so this is part of how this game works. At any rate, so now you seem to be saying is it, it's not a waste of time. I don't think fighting for your, your way of life, your property, your lifestyle, you're free, being free to the extent, again, of everybody else's nose, to the extent of where their nose begins and your fist ends. Yeah, uh, is that worth saving? Is that a waste of time to fight for that as as backed up in the trenches as we are at this point, as ignorant of a people as we are? Is it wait? Is it a waste of time? I don't. I don't. For me, it's. I've been here for, well, most of my most of my life now. It turns out, thinking it's not a waste of time, doing what little bit I can do, helping who I can as I can, feeling overwhelmed all the time, but saying we're going to keep focused, laser, 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 keep focused. Don't let them get off the point. Don't don't let them don't let them trick us. Even if they're trick they're trying to trick us, we're going to point it out. We're and we're hoping behind hope. In my listeners here, you're, you're all the same. You're, you're all here. We, I hope when I work with people that what those people are doing, when we finally break it out, that you're going to be interested enough to go do something if you couldn't figure it out before. But I know you can figure it out before. Just jump in where you need to. So is it a waste of time? I think it's a learning process anyway. And I don't know if that's ever a waste of time. But more importantly, as you start to hone in on what's going on, you become another one of the soldiers, if you will, to protect your, your republic. And I don't want to sound all patriotic on this. There's a certain, there's real principles behind those words in function that have completely been destroyed. And they're only destroyed, not in reality, where it can be reinvoked. It's that they're destroyed by the false front. And so, I don't know, I, I can repeat this over and over. Is it a waste of time? Really, we have to make that decision. Do we want the future they want for us, or do we want the future, the promise to come that we can bring to the future? And I, you know, in the summer, I keep thinking, I don't have offspring. I keep telling you all, I don't have a, I can just walk away from this. I got nothing to think about. There's no future. No one's going to get what little stuff I have, and it don't matter anyway. And yet there is something here that causes me to keep coming back into this and keep helping the counsel, if I can, hopefully wise counsel, experience, to offer how a, an oppressed people is supposed to be the beacon of being free uh, have been so decimated and going to come worse. There's just something about that that I just can't walk away from for some reason. And I'm not going to get all, I know where the force is. I know what the thing is there. But a lot of people will reject all that. However, I don't have a, a physical future here by through sons and daughters. And I'm feeling it's not a waste. I may be a crazy man. I don't know. I'm a crazy man behind a woodshed. What do I know? And yet, I don't know. Waste waste is an interesting problem. You shall not waste. That's right. That's an equity principle, you know. That's actionable. Is it a waste? That's an important, important discussion. What's being wasted? Do I have an answer for it all? Not really. But I do know that we are un uneducated, and the process educates us. That's why I say don't take up forms. If you're going to take up a form, go use it as a guide to go make your own form. And getting to the last bit, and this is striking a bit closer to home with people I work with, or not really so close, but I've had interactions with. Someone I admire here, Clint Richardson, says it appears to be a lost cause that is so stacked against us. You know, Clint Richardson is very astute. Everybody will say that, and that's, that's a thing. Clint Richardson and I have a slightly different view on a lot of this. 
uh, I admire all that he does. But this became this becomes one of those situations like William Roberts, very well read, very well understood, very well could tell you for hours on end what's going on, had his own direction, had his own plan. The late Will William Roberts, he never got to finish or see fruition to his plan. And yet when it came down to dealing with the reality relative to property law and property rights, he quickly found out all his book learning, all his study, didn't really turn to apply against what he was against. And so this becomes a, a really a problem. If you see you don't have applicable experience, it is overwhelming. It appears to be lost, folks. I'm telling you. I'm telling you it appears to be lost. There's no... Clint and I would not have a problem with saying that. But whether or not it's a waste to continue or we have an option, I think that's a decision each one of us can make. It has to make. And it is so stacked against us. In a way, we let it happen, and that's not an excuse. But are we going, is it, is it a waste to fight for free, being free? As free as, as a society can be. Like I said, there's not some things that are so bad about this place, the United States of America. And, and then we let the rats play. That was up to us. We have to take ownership of that. Well, we don't have to, I suppose, but we should take ownership of that if we expect to see a better day and to rest it from these psychopaths. That takes each one of us, each one of us grabbing the oar of that ship of state and deciding we're not going to let them run us aground or run us into, a, into an iceberg in glo during global warming, no less. So, Clint says it appears to be lost. Yes, it is. This is a, I keep telling you, I don't even know why I want to talk anymore. How bad this is, what I see. And yet, you know, there's a spirit in people. If they would just focus. I'm telling you, this thing is done. This thing is over. It's finished, folks, What is up? what we're up against. They're done. It's that close. And that's, again, is that just frivolous hope? Is it, I don't know. That's up to all of us. And it, I'll just, I have to agree, it's stacked against us. But do, what do we do? We shrug our shoulders and walk away? And Clint, Clint is someone who get, takes, takes it quite, he gets hit hard with what he does. So I can, I've, you know, he gets pummeled for the information he'll, he'll work for, for a long time to present to people and then just get trounced for it. That, that's just the way of what, of our, of our journey, I suppose, those of us that, that do this. As I say, there's not many people that really want to, uh, like, a, seats of decision. Once they hear what I'm saying, they don't want to hear me the second time. It's too much. And I don't try to overwhelm them. I've learned to back off a bit. So it has to come not from those of us that are in the trenches doing the research, giving the information, and that seeing it's overwhelmed. Well, if we're, if we're fighting in the trenches, not fighting, but gathering the information of the, of the war we're to fight, the, they're up around our ears. They're attacking us. Of course we're looking overwhelmed and it's stacked against us. But you know, uh, Americans, you know, let's, let's, let's put on a little, let's gird thy loins. Aren't we supposed to overcome the adversity? Aren't we the underdogs that over that can overcome? Yeah, I think we can. And on such a clear point, they're doing. these people are doing it with no law whatsoever. I'm not talking justice. I'm not talking the courts. I'm talking our inner, our inner law. And so, I don't know what more to say. It's uh, We have a decision to make. Uh, we have a, I have an observation. I think it's uh, we have an uh, advantage if we would just focus in on it. I don't think it's a waste. I've got no future in this to, for people. When I'm gone, eh, I'm gone. I'm out of here. But there's other people that have a way of life coming that they put in the world that I don't think that they want to see for their little ones. And so at that point, do we help our brothers and sisters with their families? Do we help our own? I don't know if that's really a question. It's just a matter, do you give up or not? What are my thoughts, uh, uh, i.e., is it worth a go at it? That's your decision. I'm hoping you would decide it is worth a go. For some reason, I see some really cool stuff in this place that are worth fighting for that have an ability to bring a peace that I don't think mankind has ever seen. And so I, I think that's worth a, a, bit of a bit of a go. Even if it's before my witness, I see people being harmed, and just the fact I can see the people harmed, it is enough. It's, it's enough to get me to make it not a waste, I suppose. So to what administrative office do we send the, last ha the later letter of habeas corpus to? Should we carry it with us when venturing out? 
Okay, so the administrative office will be to whoever, whomever, uh, whatever the state statute says is the responsible communicable disease office, the communicable disease administrator. It may be two. It may be the third. May be the, it may be the governor as well. The most important thing is to go to the communicable disease duty of the health official for the, finding the report. You'll send the letter. The letter you send demands the evidence of the report. And now I'm adding something here. Not just the report for the general first report of the, the general contagion that they believe is COVID-19. Well, I'm asking now you add the one that has your name on it. And this is now down to you, each one. I've been telling you it's coming, and now I see, I see you most have to make this specific to each one of you. And when you get the evidence that they don't have any of that, and, they, and you have the list, it's like five, to, it depends. Like Nevada, I said, has quite a few. We had to pare those down, uh, down to the first few. that we, All you need to know is whether they have evidence of this thing. And then how, by if there's no evidence, then how, by how did, how did they come to a determination? In that first letter, and I guess I'll say you can go for an example, not something you can apply directly, and people are trying to do this. Do not apply someone else's paperwork to yours cause directly. You have to take what the thing is saying and translate it into what you need in your state. Then you go over to tntrafficticket.us, look at Tulis report, find his petition for mandamus, totally outside of a habeas. But the first eight or nine pages gives you the layout and the letter that is supposed to be asked for from the local official. And that shows you then you have the power that they don't have the power. And if and then you have and write up by your state statutes for the writ of habeas corpus. It's a little bit of a read. Settle down. Copy and paste. Fill in the blanks. There's a couple points in there in each state. You just leave them as statements. You just make the statement that they need you to make. Some, and there's only really two you have to fill in the blanks. And you put in the constructed li um, restraint, unlaw, unwarranted restraint of liberty. You put down the fraud of, that they have not actually followed the law. It's a, the orders are, the police power is under color by fraud. In other words, it's a, not a non, the declaration of the cause is not non-fraudulent. They have not actually demonstrated a lawful demonstrated a lawful exigency and so that's what starts your thing it really shouldn't go too long and too far you're relying on the failure of the duty given to the executive by the legislature in that communicable disease statute and so do you carry the habeas in your pocket i'd say yeah you carry a couple copies and you've signed some and hand them to friends who you also explain how to go about doing this because it may come to a point when you're picked up and brought into into jail and I talked about the potential problem that they may want, they may not want to hear about your habeas in jail. They'll say, we don't do that here. Not a story, folks. This is the reality of a friend of mine. I put in high regard. He's the one that got me into understanding how this stuff works. Long, long time ago. And they would not let him to a, a habeas. That means your friends have to step in and file them. And they, in, in some states like the one that we have to deal with, they won't let you do it as a friend like your, the law says another violation, they require the signature of the one that's in. So you have to do that ahead of time. you got to think ahead of time. And so, yes, you have your habeas, you have it set up just in case you have to deal with the courts or the cops. Now, should you carry it with us when venturing out? Yeah, I would. that's going to start. Until we get this worked out, I think your papers are a couple of things. And I'm going to move on now because your papers are at least a habeas corpus. Friends around you have it. Your husband and wife hand each one to each other, so in case you're both not arrested, then one can know what it, what they have to do, understand what that is and what has to be done. Assert if they won't take it when you when you're put in jail, if they want to arrest you for some trespass, you shouldn't get there. But if you if if you're there, some reason for some cop wants to do what they want to do, and hopefully you survive the altercation there. The first the judicial officer you put out that you were denied the habeas corpus. It was suspended. Your viol rights were violated under color of law. Now you're building your record, and you want to assert a habeas corpus for this uh, fraudulent cover that they put on that you have evidence for if the court will allow you, and or they can look and show. You can explain that there's no name. They have not presented a name for you 
uh, a report for you that to be the contagious principles required by state law. You have a slightly different vocabulary that you're just reminding the words coming out of you that you've read from the communicable disease statute to the judicial officer, whether or not they're going to recognize it. You start making your record of the violations, and you take it with a grain of salt what they're doing, and you just keep plugging away. And I'm going to so let me get to the now through the tabs. I hope that I know I took a long time here. A lot of people actually have lots of questions on this. They're expecting stuff out of the courts that, I, that maybe the court won't give and can't give. But I also see failures in the cases on how you present them and the failure to do the procedures quite right. Notwithstanding three hours standing in front of a court, that's a big deal. Okay, so there's I don't there's no there's kudos to all this in some regard, even though it didn't turn out in March. We're so far away from March now that it's not a lot clearer. But the point is, it doesn't matter how much clearer the scam and the fraud is. It has to do with, are you focusing down on what's relevant in the law and relevant to the obligations and duties that you are not a part of, that they have to fulfill, that they are obligated to do? And if those don't exist, that they have not fulfilled those obligations under the state law, the black and white, now you start to build your case a lot better. And even the you're getting... They, the Bar Association is going to go with this, as I've t explained it before. You're just going to have to gear up for that fraud, that, that obstruction. And I'm saying the more people, the more heat that comes onto the molasses of the system starts to speed up. And you may be, as I said, that governor made a change in that lockdown order for some reason. You may have had more effect than it sounded like, and that's what starts to happen. The secret wins that you'll never be told of that occur. Like I told you, the lawsuit I filed against a district, a federal um, district ranger, the Forest Service ranger, I sued him and I sued his wife. She was partaking of his ill-gotten gains while they locked us out on a road that he had no right at all to touch. I took that case to the Supreme Court because when I filed the complaint, it was sent back to me all whited out that they never received that case in the state court. If you don't understand, I know about corruption. I took that case to the Supreme Court. And all this was was a suit against a federal officer. You, they say you can't sue a federal officer. Well, I did. you got to know how to take out their the certification possibility for the, the Attorney General, the U.S. US Attorney General. They'll try and certify that was right. Well, you can't block a highway. There's no excuse for that. And so they can't certify that he was under the law. This case, My case went up suing to the Supreme Court. I said, you, you need to order that my case get filed by the, by the court. The Supreme Court said, no, we don't. We don't have to order that clerk to do anything. In other words, you can be blocked out of court by the clerk. Well, the interesting thing about that case is I moved to have all the rules dissolve, uh, broken, not apply, so that in the interest of justice, to speed the process up. They granted that motion. Now, you have to do that in a special way. What I'm trying to show you is that I come to this with a little bit more experience on things. I do things that maybe people haven't understood can be done. I'm still denied, right? The Supreme Court denied my ability to sue that guy. Not because of the law, how the law was, because they would not take the suit into the trial court administrator, would, n would not allow it. For no reason. And guess what? They go, oh, you lost. Oh, look at the futility. Oh, see? No, the gate got opened up. The lock came out. We could use the road. We haven't been bothered since. I could care less about suing the district ranger or his wife or the money we were going to claim for that. That's all just the, that's my our arsenal coming at them. I was after that gate being open. And you know what? With all the denials and showing the corruption of the court, I got the gate open. And so the win wasn't so direct. And yes, it was a bit of work eight, nine months of delay on top of it. But in the middle of that, the gate got open. So don't look for your wins directly. Look for what you're doing, the effect you have. I see a couple things in your case. And I, I commend you for what you did way back in March. Appreciate that. And so your habeases are coming local. They may not be enough necessarily against a third-party thing. Let me offer now, we'll move into a lawsuit here that was just filed and give me another point to tell you how this works. It confirms, not because I want to tell you I'm right, it confirms what I've told you about how you have to look at things and where that directs you, where you necessarily have to go to get remedy. This is a case a judge issues new denials in Oregon man's 21 billion, with a B, bravo, 21 bravo billion, mask suit, disputing claims of her alleged political bias point by point 
The federal judge refused to step aside in an Eagle Point, Oregon man's $21 billion lawsuit seeking to halt the governor's emergency orders during the COVID-19 pandemic. So the end of that first sentence is really it tells me all I need to know. They still believe there's a COVID. He didn't go down with the fraud. But this is what had to do with an Oregon uh, ranch, Southern Oregon rancher named Francis Stephen Hayes. He was denied the second time now a request for a preliminary injunction putting a stop to the state's emergency order. He claims in a lawsuit that, that his constitutional rights were violated because he couldn't buy feed for his livestock last summer without wearing a mask. Last summer without wearing a mask. Hayes' lawsuit against Governor Kate Brown and the state seeks $100,000 for himself and $5,000 for every Oregonian due to the alleged rights violations during the governor's emergency order. The core of Hayes' lawsuit stemmed from an incident at Coastal Farm and Ranch Store. So we've got to put this in our mind. Right? What is the condition? What's the situation? Who are the, who are the parties? Where are they located? All this turns on whether or not this can be a federal suit on its own. I don't know. I didn't know at the time where Coastal Farm and Ranch's home office was. It turns out it's in the state. So he doesn't have access to diversity jurisdiction through the federal court anyway. And this is a local problem under state law. What I've been telling you to be very careful of how you think your rights are vindicated in a federal court. They're not. Not against the state anyway, that way. The core of, okay, so he went to a coastal farm and ranch store. If you folks in ranching think that you have a necessary need, you can't be mitigated against. Here, Here's this the dynamic of what he's facing and what he decided to do. And how it kind of goes south, we'll, we'll kind of get here in a moment, in which he claims is threatened. He was threatened with physical arrest, publicly humiliated, and charged with trespass for attempting to exercise his right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Sounds real cool. I'm defending my rights. He was charged with trespass. Apparently, he didn't assert the fact that they stopped him into a public accommodation was trespass against him. And I'm going to give you another link that you're going to see, hear a guy talk about this from California. Uh, he's a we're partners. I've never talked to the guy, but we're, we're partners. I mean, as far as his, the way he approaches it, he's even more administrative on how he does it. And yet it all comes to the same conclusion on how we do this without being hit with charges and how we should be able to just kick back, realize what, who we're dealing with, realize the fear. All you're there for is your record. He says the same things I do. And I, I'm hoping I get some time maybe to talk with him. He may be somebody interesting to be, to know at least. Anyway, we'll get to that in the future. So he's a uh, he physical arrest. He's threatened, publicly humiliated, charged with trespass. Well, he's charged. That's a misdemeanor. It's not an arrestable offense unless the discretion of the of the officer says so. So he can walk on that. So he's still charged. Now he's facing. He's in jeopardy now. Faces a misdemeanor charge of second degree trespassing. It's in the Jackson County Circuit Court. Well, there you go. The criminal it goes right to the. It didn't go federal. It went state. He wants to say, comes now, accused. And this is all the stuff I kind of cringe at a little bit. Anyway, he says, comes now, Francis Stephen Hayes, and one of the people, belligerent claimant at law, a man created in his image of the Father, Jesus the Christ, of the Holy, and the Holy Ghost, not as evolved man, or any other form of primate or other animal, to deny all elements of the charge against him, in his 19 response, uh, page 19 response. Just denying the elements would have been sufficient there, you didn't need to telegraph uh, uh, any much more than that. And they're not relevant. It doesn't matter who you are. If you're violating someone else's rights, you're still liable. Now, the problem is, what's his defense? And why, my thought is, why did you why did you do a pre-plea remedy and avoidance and assert the fraud? See, it all comes down to the same answer to anybody, depending on how they're, they're addressed, even criminal. It, it, anyway, so that was a quick inter, interjection on that. But state court record says that Hayes has a warrant failing to appear. Now he's compounding the problem. Please, folks, don't do this to yourself. I, I've never met the man, don't know, didn't talk to him, nothing. I'm just seeing this report. And he's in a court, a federal court. It's not even an Article Three court. He's before an Article Three judge. She's been commissioned. But she's a criminal. I got that on fact in our lawsuit in 2013. She would not constitute an Article Three court in Medford. She allowed it to be a territorial court, then transferred the case to a bar member, senior judge without jurisdiction at all, into a court without jurisdiction. 
He came back as a senior judge and said, I don't have jurisdiction, but I'm going to make an order stopping this. Completely a crime. Trespass on the case. Completely fraud on the court. It's not fraud. It's fraud on justice. Violation of equity. The highest equity principles. If you don't understand, I know about injustice. As, is it worth it? Well, you know what? We got that record. And every time we assert that, even though it's not supposed to be recognized because that one senior judge that said he didn't have jurisdiction put a record in, which it got modified, it got disappeared for about two years, and then it came back in. You know, no one answers us on, on when we assert that case because they know it's a default judgment. The court even answered late. He had no authority anyway. And so, that's not helping anybody. This is, in our stuff, in what I do, for what we do through Jefferson Mining District, but this is the type of people you're dealing with in these judges. You need to have a better a game plan against this type of corruption. I would not even challenge this woman Aiken. Would not even try. Would not try to accuse her. Would not give her the time of day to come back with 13 points to give her the time to think about how I was going to extorsiate someone who wants to claim in and say he's the Jesus, the Christ, and the Holy Ghost, and the Father, and the image. That's what they do. I wouldn't give her the time of day to do that. And so, there's a whole different, I have a whole different view of this anyway, but this was a state case. This was a state law case. He got hit under state law for crime. He caused that. He didn't need to cause that. And I don't know what to say about that. This is where we all start with the wrong foot. What he needed to do was at least start asserting and making a record of the liability of the place that was open for public accommodation. Why do I say that? Let me see here quickly. Oh, I need to get to what Aiken said. For as much as I dislike her, she's also the green religion type. So be careful. We've got a couple of other cases that we know about Aiken. She tied in with Mary Wood, the writer of the wanting to put in all this nature's trust nonsense, adjective policy type stuff, not law, to destroy your country. This is, this, this is a judge that agrees with all that. I just can't tell you how bad this whole thing is. She's also involved through family and connections over to the Oregon One problem and U U Uranium One. All of that, folks. This is all how corrupt this is. Yes, this is our country. This is what the mess we've left it in. And this is what you're leaving to your future. So was it a waste to fight against this? That's really up to everybody. I think it's a waste not to. Waste not, want not, that kind of stuff. Waste is a violation. You allow waste, you're the culprit. And so I don't know more to say. I don't have people I talk with to work this out beyond what I tell you here, what comes to me to tell you here. Not satisfied with Aiken's ruling, he, Hayes has petitioned Aiken to be removed from the case. We moved up. Aiken previously denied Hayes' motion for an injunction last August. And a thank you for him to go forward, but it's in the wrong court anyway, according to documents filed in the United States District Court. He's not satisfied with that. Aiken disputed Hayes... Hayes' motion is based on a rulings of 11 similar lawsuits surrounded, surrounding the state emergency orders. Aiken disputed Hayes' motions based on ele rulings in 11 similar lawsuits of surrounding state emergency orders during the pandemic. And because the party disagreeing with the judge ruling isn't grounds for recusal, which is true. But she's agreed there's a pandemic. And although every case I know of that's been filed which is similar, apparently, to his, never ch challenged the validity of the police power that is handed to the court by the federal government. None. And But for that, that Philadelphia case where Jacobson took away that power from the state and the judge was going to allow the excess under the color of Jacobson because that's the, Jacobson says an excess is actionable, only that one judge, which apparently wasn't put in this case, is what the judge this judge ruled on. And the 11 cases are not the case you want to file. But his case was thrown under that bus. Why? I'm trying to show you to just make your case distinct. Because I, she says, I decline to recuse myself simply because the plaintiff feels my previous decision was in error. Uh, she disputed Hayes' claims of political bias, which she claims uh, was, was based in her work in the 80s. It's Okay, so let's, let me get down to the point of what she says. She cites legal precedent that determined the political activity prior. And, uh, given the activity cited by the plaintiff occurred 40 years, eh, going through the paragraphs, has a, uh, I don't have a way to highlight this at this point. They keep failing on me. Has a, also, a, Hayes also sought Aiken's recusal based on claims that Aiken has voiced support for me, in the media versus Brown. Okay, all that's really irrelevant. If you go look at recusals, 
they've become very hard to get anyway, but doing it this way is not going to work. He didn't research. He's listening to somebody, or re he didn't do the research he's supposed to do, first of all, to not be in the court. But, but anyway, neither here nor there. She does not recuse herself. She won't be recusable, as I can see it. And she doesn't have jurisdiction. And she actually explains how that is, if I can find it here. Uh, Aiken acknowledged that at one point she compared Brown's legislative background to the background of Justice Roberts, but called Hayes' allegations conclusory. So if you go through this, you can look how they're going to destroy your, your objections to them. This is not the way to do a recusal anyway. And this whole story on the recusal is irrelevant to what you really need to know about how you get a case in. I don't think you should be doing it into the federal court. Reviewing all the plaintiff's arguments, she says, I find the plaintiff has failed to show that a reasonable person with the knowledge of all the facts would conclude that my impartiality in this matter might be questioned. That is a standard. Unless you can meet that standard, don't try to recuse the judge. Accordingly, the motions of recusal are denied. Aiken picked apart reasons why the federal lawsuit doesn't appear successful at face value and why she's denying it. Hayes claimed in his lawsuit that the mask order violates the due process rights of Oregon's 5th and 14th Amendments relating to executive power and seat of power, and later clarified to the court that he is, to the court that he is attacking the underlying declaration of emergency stating attacking he's attacking the underlying declaration of emergency is not asserting fraud with the elements specifically stated. This is what I'm saying. You can say that, but that doesn't mean anything. You have to state the fraud and explain how the fraud is. What constitutes the fraud? Specifically. And I've been looking for any answer coming back, any, any court coming back, any uh, respondent. They don't respond to the, they don't state that the fraud is not specifically pled. And that's the only thing I'm looking for, because if it is specifically pled, they're supposed to answer to it. In equity. Not because of the biased uh, courts. Further, Aiken states that federal court... Listen, folks. This is what I've been telling you. Finally found someone. Federal court is not the proper venue for arguing matters of state law. However, she notes that even if the court were to analyze whether the governor's order violated that statute, quote, the court would have to note that Oregon's revised statute defining emergency, special, emergency specifically includes disease as a type of event which would qualify for the designation. There's the problem. There was no addressing of fraud that was coming under the color of disease. She went on before and announces about and draws precedent from the 1905 Jacobson case, contrary to the Philadelphia judge, which would have been a great thing to do, uh, to go as a con as a consequence in an appeal, if you had your case set up better. But uh, she finds, contrary to the Philadelphia case, more like what the states have been relying on and winning for, versus the uh, Jacobson versus the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Aiken states that the court's role, quote, is not to usurp the functions of another branch of government close quote, in deciding how best to protect the public health as long as the measures are not arbitrary and unreasonable. And I can tell you that that complaint likely did not say that those were, the, the orders were based in fraud and had to be arbitrary and unreasonable, and therefore Jacobson authorized the review. Now, you just still have to get past the fact that state law question is not, the venue for that is not in the federal court, but that he did not say that this was an arbitrary and unreasonable imposition is the mitigate, the secondary mitigation point. This story tells you how a federal court will take you down, how the plaintiff did not do it properly, and where it should be. Now, so we learn again, as I've been telling you for a year, what you're analysis has to be why you don't want to go to court, what they're relying on, the bus they throw you under. You need to avoid all of that. And you can do it by the method I've told you and get the evidence that there was they didn't comply with the state statute that the legislature required the executive follow. And when you get into the what they do then, I'll give you a heads up, then the governor comes in and says, well, I don't have to follow that. Well, that may or may not be, 
But now we have the problem, the governor has now isolated him, him or herself out of the reliance on the safe harbor that the legislature required for communicable disease. And the governor, when he wants to or she wants to invoke the police power, still has to now demonstrate the non-fraudulent exigency. But he can't use now the legislature's help. And that makes it actually worse if you know to highlight that. And this is where you're going to have the trouble. Where you have the burden, it becomes your trouble because the courts will go with this same thing that this Aiken just did. But when you do it as a habeas, it's a little different because they, when you assert fraud, they have to show how it's not. And you should know enough to be able to just, like, it'd be like a tennis right? You just bat all the things they bring because it doesn't stop the fraud. They don't have a non-fraudulent exigency. And before, until they get that police power, they're going to have to demonstrate that. And so I want to bring up what this gentleman didn't do, in my mind. And this brings us back to the sweet cake stuff and discrimination type thing. What I told you was in the proper, improper decided, these cases are improperly decided in the Labor Commission. At any rate, this is where you have to go. And this is underneath that state law, underneath labor and employment and lawful discrimination, a lawful discrimination section at 659A. If you scroll on down and you, again, seeing the black and white, if you go read through, you start seeing these words used. It's important to see these words. And so you look at the policy, the purpose and policy of this law in 659 relative to discrimination, because he's saying I'm being discriminated against. This is where he has to develop, he should have went through this in order to develop a record so that he wouldn't get arrested and charged with trespass. Or at least have a record to make that his, the trespass wasn't his, it was theirs first. The purpose of this chapter is, this is the whole chapter now, 60, 659A, the purpose of this chapter is to encourage the fullest utilization of the valuable workforce by removing arbitrary standards of race, color, religion, sex, sexual orientation, national origin, marital status, pick one, folks, age or disability as a barrier to employment of the inhabitants of this state and to ensure the human dignity of all people, human dignity of all people, if we get rid of the human animal part here, what that other, what Mr. Hayes was trying to get at, human dignity of all people within this state and to protect their health, safety, and morals from the consequences of intergroup hostility, tensions, and practices of unlawful discrimination of any kind based on, here, there's a list, and it's limited to this part, race, color, religion. This is important when we get to the links coming up. Religion becomes important, but don't, don't try to swing it out like you're hitting a home run with it. Just becomes part of your record of the violations that the state law says was supposed to be protected against morals relative to religion, sex, sexual orientation, national origin, marital status, age, disability, or familial status. To accomplish this purpose, the legislature, the legislative assembly intends by this chapter to provide. In equity, you have to work to the author's intention. This becomes important. I don't want to go through more. I just want to point out all the categories of things you can bring up, disability being one. We're talking about COVID. In fact, I think it occurs to me, you're, to be a COVID order violator is by definition being healthy. If you can understand how they've got this all contorted, to be a COVID order violator is being healthy. And I've got another insight that happened last night. Look at another video. Happened to be with the definition of, I mean, the what happens in the symptoms about dry cough. Let me move down here. Down, I think it's into 142. It's 659A. And I think it's number four. Again, all my links uh, go away. I don't know how, why they do this. I look away and they disappear on me. Uh, discrimination against individual with disability in real estate transactions, prohibited advertising discrimination, pre preference prohibited, allowance of reasonable modification, assistance discriminatory practices prohibited. All right, that's what we're talking to. And where are we talking it at? Well, it was out in here, I think it was 142, if I could ever get to it. If a place of public accommodation 
Now understand this is under the Employment and Labor Division. Why this is sticking in here, I don't know. This is like those revisers problems. But here it is anyway. In a place of public accommodation or of access to state government services, programs or activities customarily charges a person for damages that the person causes in the place. The place may charge a person with a disability or an assistance an animal trailer for damages that an assistant animal trainer and animal trainees cause in the place. Is a disability to you if you need a care which shows you that they're, you, they're recognizing that you as a disabled party can have the accommodations are made to an animal. This builds up to the case to where the discrimination against the individual with a disability by employment agency, labor organization, place of public accommodation, see how they shoehorn that in, in the labor context, or state government prohibited. Mental disorder treatment, not evidence of inability to manage the property. At 142-659-A, number four, it is unlawful practice for any place of public accommodation resort or amusement as defined under 659 a 400 or any person acting on behalf of such a place to make any distinction discrimination or restriction because a customer or patron is an individual with a disability speaks directly to mr hayes and what he ought to have really started to establish he should have had this passage on a card or a paper with a piece of paper getting ready to take a lot of notes about the obstruction to his access of the place of public accommodation. Now I want to send you back over and thank you to another emailer, which I haven't responded to, sending me back over to Peggy Hall's website. However, I want to caution something. And I, I understand people have should be maybe paid for their labors, but they're offering cards and this and that for donations and payment. I don't know how strict that is. I'm not advocating this website for any money you might want to contribute. I would feel better just to donate the money to her if you want to donate the money, but not for a product this way. They have a service, I suppose, that allows you to go get this, your state laws. Please, don't use this service. Go, You go figure out how to find them on your own. If you don't do that, you're missing a big lesson about how you understand what you're up against. That said... Peggy Hall's website, The Healthy American, trademarked. In fact, the, the links I got were, it's like a marketing campaign now. I'm really leery about some of this stuff. So I'll be careful. I'm going to just, just give you a caveat. Be careful and look around for the free stuff that she gives and offers. And to her credit, absolutely to help everybody out. The, there's a bunch of links on a, on a link. I'm going to give you a bunch of links to develop your notice of discrimination. Now, please don't just use it out of turn uh, just because it's offered. Take the concepts and apply them to you locally. This is out of California. Most of this for her is California. They'll send you the, the laws, I suppose. They'll give you a card for 12 bucks or whatever on the federal laws. Don't You don't need to spend any money. You just go find those things for yourself. Why? It's important you understand and educate yourself how to get around the requirements upon you to be able to understand, not ha be fed this thing, but you go find the banquet for yourself and you nourish yourself for your own because it's your responsibility. There's a lot of things that she's offering. It's a real service here. And thank you to the emailer for turning me back over. I wasn't too thrilled about the marketing campaign. It may be all that they're doing, but I'm just start shining because it starts looking like the old way where people would come in, they make a name for themselves, and all of a sudden they start shoving the products at you. I'm telling you, you have to get take the lead, but don't just take it a lead in the nose. Don't put the ring in your nose, and don't put this on as a lead that she leads you by. This is important to follow. They're doing a lot of good work, especially this video where she says how to sue sprouts. Now, forget the sprouts. It happens to be the focus of a grocery store in in Orange County, apparently. Just look at this information generically. The gentleman, which I don't remember now, who has put this together, like I'll get this name, John J. Singleton, listen to what he's having to say relative to what Mr. Hayes in, in Oregon should have done relative to 659A and the discrimination at a place of public accommodation. Listen to 
John J. Singleton's approach. Now, John J. has a another site. He'll charge you money for what he's done. He's been doing this for 30 years, apparently, but he sounds right on. He's developed a 56-page document for you. Don't just follow it. Understand what he's telling you, and then you implement it. But he offers this to you for free. You have a link. I got it for you from Peggy Hall's website. So all this work is great stuff. I'm asking you to take responsibility. Don't trade cash for your work. This is not the time to do that. Take the time it takes. They say, how to address these people that third-party state law relevant court cases. He advocates he doesn't want to go to court, but he expects to. Just the same way I'm telling you, look down the future. You anticipate you're going to have to go to fix this. And a lot of times it has to be the court. It doesn't necessarily have to be there. He shows you and explains what I have been, maybe a lot more succinctly, I suppose, specifically how to go about what you do when you're confronted with these people at the door. He explains to you the, the trespass on you initially. He explains how you try not to get involved. You dispassionately just explain things. He's run into a pretty good effect this way. It's not an argument. I keep telling you don't do it. He doesn't advocate an argument. The cops show up. You explain. There's some things you have to ask the cops. They're listening for this stuff. There's a way to interact. I don't get to re listen to the entire thing, but the what I did listen to, absolutely good instruction. Instruction to take in, think about, chew up, go look at your state laws and reapply. Stick yourself in that moment when someone wants to come against you with some authority in a third-party manner. Understand, we have another report out of Oregon. Somebody put forward this discrimination statute. It wasn't good enough. So there may not, it's not a necessarily a win. What you're, he's showing you, as what I've told you, you begin your record. You then compile from the record of the events at the moment, and you ask specific questions. You have to know to ask these very particular things to put liability on the one that's stopping you, that's actually abducted you when they stop you, committing the crime of assault, essentially. When you look at what he's saying, you start to go in your state statutes, find those codes, confirm that they're applicable. I think California is a common law state, so you've got to be they're a little bit adjusted from some other states. You apply, if you don't understand what I'm saying, because I'm really kind of around, I don't really give you the form, you need it more succinctly stated, I think John Jay does that. Whether it's absolutely accurate for you, I can't, I'm can't. i not going to underwrite that. But it is an example to listen to. It is a way to approach this. I think you need to follow that. He gives you the statement. You get to watch him talk in an account in an interview. He wrote a document. He gives you the background. I haven't read the entire document. It, it's a background for you. Accept it for that. Apply it to yourselves. As you have to go into stores and get confronted by this problem, their people are are feared. They think they're following the law. They've been thrashed on by the state. To be, they're going to come after them. The cops are called sometimes. It doesn't have to go there. You need to be prepared this way. The question, Achilia, do you have to have a, a habeas? I definitely would anymore. If you're going to be out and about and, and maybe face this and want to stand up, and again, it's not a stand up in anger. It's a stand up to not be infringed and extorted and this and that, which you don't take personal. You just make sure you get the record on, and you don't say it yourself. You get them to admit and commit to it, and there's a way to do it. He shows you how to do that. Another example of someone stopping this, I, I'm, Rose Green stands up in supermarket regarding math. I said we were going to be faced with our own selves. We were going to be fighting ourselves. This is what the system wants. She shows you in a video what it took, you know, I think this is in England, how to stop this, uh, how to, what to do to engage the official in the store, and then what the harassment you're going to be receiving from the, the public. And she's totally not wanting to have this happen. This is what we're being forced into. You have to be prepared. I think it's important to watch what goes on. You need to prepare your mind uh, how this works. I think more importantly, instead of did what Mr. Hayes was and attack a judge and all this in the wrong court, Get your record up front more like what John Jay suggests, what I've been suggesting. See, John Jay, they, they are dealing it from the mitigation, the mass side, when you interact with third parties. What I'm telling you is how you try to get the record that shows that the government has not fulfilled its obligations to be able to have a say. Now, government, we move from UK, United States, UK, now we're going to maybe go up into Kanukistan, I think this was, 
Lockdowns and de are deadlier than COVID. I wrote a respectful letter to Premier, Premier Ford uh, asking the end of the lockdown. This is a Twitter a filing a folder, I think. It's the only, t only Twitter I got. I had collected it from a long time ago. I didn't even go on Twitter uh, this week uh, to, to do any of my tabs. So it's interesting how useless that's become for me uh, and not, not needed where I was using it so much. But anyway, so here, this is Twitter. Uh, Roman Babar, B Baber, I think I mentioned him before. Well, he gives you a letter on this link of what an official is willing to write. Now we're back to Florida. You look at what the Kanukistanian MP wrote for uh, Kanukistan, and then maybe adapt that for what you might want to say to a governor locally who is conducive to ending this nonsense against someone they politically are, are at odds with, in this case, the Republicans versus the, the Democrats. Now, you use that. You know, go ahead and use whatever any part in a storm and whatever tool, a weapon to cut through this nonsense. This shows that there's officials that are willing to write letters. You could be, if this is more how you're wired to do it, you might be able to uh, allow show some official who's willing, who needs to have the help to write the thing, to write a letter and become more of the voice against this to bring and maintain the republic as they see it as well. I have colleagues that do this with their local representatives. In fact, we were working with a new law. They're trying to give the governor more power. We're trying to interject, and we've gotten a representative to interject checks and balances that the attorneys don't want in there. And so this is another place that people can go. I've given you three things reflecting what the pushback is, what to see, what people are doing, the hardships they're, they're, this is all on a fraud, the hardships they're meeting, but that we have, if we set ourselves up, yes, we have a thing to do, despite the stacked odds against us. It only takes one of us for each one of us anyway. We're defending ourselves, and we, I, think, I think we can do it, and we can do it in ways that we don't get arrested. And I guess that's what I appreciate really so much about John Jay's it's what Silverton, whatever his name, excuse me, whatever he suggests, he's he's really laid back about it, if you will. You got to be just calm about what's happening. You just want to make your record. It's uh, I think Peggy Hall calls it her incident report. Yeah, let's call it whatever you works out to make it formalized that you're now becoming the investigative reporter. I've talked to you about being for years and years, and when things come against you, I have a link to. It's still up. Kerry Mullis, the full interview with, by Gary with by Gary Null from 1996, fascinating interruption inter, interview with Gary Mullis, the guy who invented the process of PCR, who denounced its use for di diagnosis. Who I want you to po focus on something really carefully here. In the early part of the video, it's like an hour, two hours. He makes a quick comment about the symptoms of AIDS. Remember last week we talked about the video. You hope you go see COVID. That's what this pandemic injection experiment is on you, injecting you with COVID. He makes a comment about something that I didn't, I forgot about, memory hole stuff. He said really quickly what the what the symptoms of AIDS was. The one thing that he mentioned really quickly in a passing was one of the symptoms was dry cough. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't know if you remember, as soon as the ventilator problem came up in the hospital fraud, all those symptoms and all the people suffering under the hospitals went, went quiet. The issue relative to dry cough hit me as relative to co uh, AIDS, as well as COVID-19. And then that, the thought occurred to me, if it's a dry cough, what's the purpose of the mask? If it's a dry cough, there's nothing it's blocking. All them droplets that are not existent. Maybe another option for y'all to throw on the heat on throw on figuring out how it is that they've thrown everything into a mixmeister, inverted everything upside down. You didn't keep control over it, and that's how they're winning the day. That's how they're getting it because you're not bringing calm, peaceful organization that shows that they are going to be liable if they continue because you've done the research, not because you know so much, but because you can become that investigative reporter, because you learn to step up and protect yourself and not let, allow fear, uh, at least minimum fear, to, to rule the world anymore and to destroy your, your life and your country. Thank you, Grimner, for what you do at Real Liberty Media. Thank you for all the donations that go on. I appreciate it. Thank you for all the support and all your efforts to stop this. I think we can. I'll be with you next week. Tech diffs or nature will.
Well, that's another lesson. I hope with today's information you can take it to those that misbehave. From behind the woodshed, leaving his mark on the beast, this is Hal Anthony. Till next time, journey with purpose. up a can of whoop-ass feels like. Son, you just opened a whole case of whoop-ass.